Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials and in this video I'm going to show you how you can host your own Rails project in 2024 for free. It doesn't cost any money. Uh, I want to quickly talk about how you used to be able to do this. There was a service called Heroku which would allow you to have um, I think it was like unlimited apps. I don't know. There, you could host a lot of apps on Heroku for free, and use the free tier. And that was until it was purchased by Salesforce, and then Salesforce completely got rid of the free option, requiring you to pay for the mini tier, which it ends up being about twenty dollars when you add in Postgres and Redis. There's no free option for those. So it kind of adds up just for just to host one demo project, which you don't even know if, like how much you're going to do with that. All right, we're going to be using a service called Render. So if you don't already have an account, go to render.com and create that account. And then you'll see that there's um, a few different things that is going on. So they actually have a blueprint where you can create a YAML file you specify the different things that your app needs but this actually requires a membership or something it requires you to put your credit card in if you want to just do a free one then you have to set it up manually which means you create a web service a postgres service and a redis service and then you take these urls and you add them as environment variables to the web service and then your rails app will use them so let me demonstrate this and show you how easy it is. We can get our app hosted online in just a few minutes. So let's start by creating a new Rails project. So I'm gonna call it this and then I'm gonna specify the database as PostgreSQL because that's the only database that render supports right now. And then we're gonna use Tailwind for CSS, but you can use any CSS library. All right, now that that's completed, I'm gonna CD into this and I'm gonna start it up with bin dev so we can check it out locally. So now we'll go to localhost 3000 and we'll see that uh, couldn't find the database. So let's create that database. And then now we'll see we have the default rail screen. So this is perfect. From here, I'm gonna create a landing page. So I'm gonna use rails G controller and then I'm gonna create Pages controller and a home action. Now we can open up the app inside of Visual Studio Code. I'm going to open that project. And what I want to do is change the root of the application. So inside of the folders, we can go to config and then the routes.rb. Inside of here, we have all of the routes defined. And you'll see we got this added the get for the pages home. But what we want to do is we want to set it as a root. So we can either uncomment this or just change this. But I'm going to uncomment this and then just change this to pages home action. And I'm just going to delete this because I don't think we need that. Now we can restart the server. Reload the page and we'll see we have the home page. So what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna go and grab from Tailwind Components. Uh, let's go to this one. I just wanna get some basic Tailwind code. This looks pretty cool. Should be able to just copy this, paste it here. All right, <clears throat> perfect. And also I'm going to delete this container around it. So when you use the Tailwind with the Rails, it actually adds this to the application, the layouts, the layouts application to HTML. I want to delete that main container, and now it's gonna take up the whole screen. And this looks pretty nice actually. I like the styling. So now I want to get this hosted online. So to take this and get it onto render. 
we have to first host this on GitHub. So I have a GitHub account. If you don't have one, you go create one. So I'm gonna go over here, create a new repository. And then you can copy this code here. And that actually just pushes the readme, so we also need to add all of our files for our Rails app, so we can say git add dot, and then I'll add a commit message of just first commit, and then I'll push that code. Now we reload, we'll see we have all of our code here correctly, and from here we can go to render, create a new web service, and then click on the first option for build and deploy from GitHub repository. And then we're going to connect that repo. And make sure you have the right one. And then I'm going to give it a name. Select the free option. And then here's the environment variables where we'll add uh, the things that we want. One thing we can add right now is the Rails master key. Since that's pretty important. So if you go into your app and config, master.key you want to take that and put it here and now we'll create it we don't have the postgres set up so we'll want to do that next but uh, this should be able to build it correctly but let's get started and let's do the postgres so we can come over here actually i think the naming has to use underscores demo site and then select the free option create this database and now the thing that we're gonna look for down here is the internal database URL but we have to wait until this is ready because I guess it takes a second to create the storage okay, I'm gonna go back over here and check on the web service it should be deploying so right now it's just installing all the gems looks like everything's working or everything's going fine right now okay perfect now the it's still doing something but I think it's created okay so now we can go and copy this internal database URL then go back to the web service and on the left click to environment and we're gonna add a new environment variable we're gonna call it database URL and we're gonna paste that in save that and then to add Redis, it's a really similar process. And the reason why you need Redis is for broadcasting with action cables, it, it uses Redis. And for your background jobs. So let me show you. Oh, did this deploy it? Okay. I guess I did another deploy because I, the environment variable was updated. So that's good. Let's go and create the Redis instance. We can also name this something and then select the free option. And I'll create this instance. And then now all we need is the internal Redis URL. Now we can go back to the web service environment variables. Whoops, click the wrong button. Click add environment variable. And then set the Redis URL. Save changes. And just like that, we have everything set up. Okay, so right now we have everything set up on render. We have the Postgres database service, we have the Redis service, and we have that tied into the web service with the environment variables. But the one thing that we were missing is the render build file, which is the file that's gonna get executed with the commands that will be used to build your app to get ready for production. Things like compiling assets. So to create this, we can go into the our code base and inside of the bin folder, create a file called render-build and use the .sh extension. And then inside of here, we're gonna paste this bit of code, which has a few comments, uh, which these are important to add for the shell script. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna bundle and then it's gonna pre-compile the assets for production. This is really important to get, to have your CSS and JavaScript show up on your app, make everything work right. And this actually 
After we add this file in, the last part that we need to do is we need to make this executable. And the way that we can do that is with chmod. So we can go into the terminal and then enter this bit of code, which will make that file executable. And then add this file to the GitHub repo. Hey, so I created a gem to create this file for you. And it's actually really easy to add. So I'll show you how to do that here. Just go to the console and type in bundle add and render build setup. This is gonna pull down the gem that I just created and then all you have to do is rails g render build setup. And just like that, it creates the build file and it also makes it an executable. Then I'm gonna push it up and then from there, it'll auto deploy with render. And now it'll be able to do the build step and everything should be able to build and show up correctly. Okay, so look, it just deployed. We have our worker spinning up. It's listening on the port. So the site is live. We can go and check it out. And look at that, everything looks great. So there you have it. This is how to deploy your app Rails 7 to production. Uh, we haven't really tested out if the database or if Redis works though. So let's do something to test that out. We can just go and create a new model. Actually, I'm gonna do a scaffold for posts. We'll give it a title, a body of rich text, and an image, which will be type attachment. Here, I'll zoom in help you see that yeah just enter this in create that it'll add the model and then actually since we're adding action text and attachments we need to run rails action text colon install which will add the migrations and the CSS for action text and for active storage so after we've done this let's do rails db migrate and start the server up again um, and then actually we won't see it on production because we'll have to deploy again. We can go locally, check it out, and we don't have anything yet. So I'm going to change this button to say to redirect to the posts. And that's what we just created. So right here we can just say change this for some Ruby and say post path. And I'll change the text to a few posts. And then maybe this one we could do a new post. So we can say new post path and then let's change the text to. So right now it says learn more. Let's say create new post. Or maybe just new post. Yeah, I like that. So okay, this is my first post. And then let's see, I should. Yeah, I have a few images. Create it. We're not displaying the image. We can fix that real quick. Let's go open up the post partial. So in here, in the app, in the views folder, open up posts, and then you'll see there's underscore post file. This is where we're displaying all of that. So right now, for the image, we're just linking to the file. I'm gonna change that to image tag for the image, and then, oh, just, we can actually leave this condition if it's attached, that's good because then it won't break. Okay, so we're just playing it, it's kind of large. I'm gonna quickly add some CSS. So I just added a, a width of 40, which will be pretty small. There we go. But the way that we can test out the broadcasting is why don't we broadcast the new post to maybe just right underneath these posts. So the way that we can do that is on the home page. At the very top, let's add a turbo stream. Actually, it doesn't have to be at the top. Uh, it really doesn't. <laughs> you can put it anywhere. But what I want to do is underneath this, let's add a div. We'll do an ID of post. And then I'm just going to do the turbo stream here. Let's say turbo stream from post. 
So what we want to do is every time that someone creates a new post, I just wanted to broadcast to this page. Just so we can test out the broadcasting. So we, this actually should be pretty easy on, if we go to the post model. Let's go to the app model post. And then we should be able to say broadcasts. And I think this will automatically broadcast to the post just like that. So let's test it out. So the way that I'm going to test it is I'm going to go and just say open a new window. So then we can we can just create a new post over here. And just like that, it, was, it broadcasted to the page. So just like I expected. And then we should be able to edit it too. Update. Mm. It didn't update it. I'm not sure why, because it should broadcast since I'm just doing the method broadcast. Oh, because we need to turbo stream for the post inside the partial. Isn't that why? Turbo stream from post. And actually, let's put it inside of this div just in case uh, we delete this uh, post. Because I think that's an option too. All right. <clears throat> now I can open up this. Let's create another post. Or wait, I'm editing. Okay. We can test out the images inside of action tags. Broadcast it. We got it there. Let's try to update it. Update. Okay, and it automatically replace the post. So now everything's working as expected. Uh, it's broadcasting. Um, let's go test it out in production, but real quickly, I'm going to change the background just so it stands out. You know, what I'll do is on this div, let's just give this a light background and I'll do a little bit of opacity too. All right. And I'm just going to add everything. So this is add the post model and test broadcasting. We're gonna push that. And then this will automatically deploy with render. All right, so the service is live now. And let's go see if everything works on production. So we can view posts. Okay, I'm gonna do this in a new window again. Whoops. Oh, uh, didn't mean to move this one. Okay. Let's add the image. And what happens? Hey, it, it goes right over here. Um, it looks like the image isn't showing up though, but that's a, the problem with that is we need to set in the, we need to set the default URL either inside of that service that we're broadcasting or just inside of here in the environment initializer. So I'll show you real quickly. I have this in one of my other apps. So yeah, something like this. Set the the one for development and then for production. That host is actually right here, but when you go and purchase your own URL, you'll put that instead of the one that you get by default. I'm gonna create this, save that, and then we can push this. And yeah, everything's gonna work after that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful. Please, if you have any questions and you need any more help, uh, please let me know. I have Discord too, I'll leave that in the description. So if you wanna message me, you can add me there. And also, if you have any other ideas for content involving Ruby on Rails, JavaScript, or web development, I even do mobile development too. I would love to create more content for this channel and to share with you guys.